Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the signs of the times continue to unravel, the scriptures has revealed countless events that would take place before certain prophecies are unfolded and fulfilled. A lot of Israelites and indigenous black people are looking for the signs of the Antichrist, the mark of the beast, the two witnesses, Jacob's trouble, the great tribulation, and the day of the Most High. Many people are overlooking other important signs of the times. Israelites, it is important to have your own relationship with the Most High to better prepare yourself, family, and friends from the troubles that lies in the times of sorrows as well as in Jacob's trouble. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Another error many Israelites and indigenous black people are making is that they are eager to go home, that they are skipping steps and overlooking important events that is affecting them right now. You're not going to be delivered until everything that was written prior to your deliverance are fulfilled. The word of the Most High said, all things written must be fulfilled. These be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. When Peter took the sword and cut off the ear of the heathen that came to arrest the Messiah, the Messiah said to Peter, who tried to interfere with the scriptures being fulfilled, how can the scriptures be fulfilled if the heathens do not arrest him? The Messiah went on to say to Peter, this is how it must happen, and he healed the heathen. And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priests and smote off his ear. Then said Jesus unto him, Put up again thy sword into his place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkst thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled, that thus it must be? Likewise, Israelites, your Savior is not coming until every prophecy before your deliverance are fulfilled. Israelites, the word of the Most High said, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything pray, give thanks, and let your requests be known to the Most High. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. While the prophecies are starting to unfold, we have to be vigilant and listen to the instructions of the Most High. By now, you should know through prayer and fasting is how you communicate with the Most High. When you cry out to the Most High for deliverance, the Most High will respond by beginning to fulfill everything that is written to lead to your deliverance. The Most High is not going to deliver you from the land of your captivity, then go back to fulfill what was written before your deliverance. When you pray and the Most High accept your prayers, he will begin to start the process of your deliverance. He will protect you if you're a part of the remnant. When the prophesied times of suffering and tribulation is upon our people, if you're a part of that generation that will endure to the end, he will protect you until all who is written in the book is rescued and safe. Just because you want to go home, it doesn't mean the Most High is going to overlook what is written. The scripture said the word of the Most High will not return to him void. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. The Most High is aware that Jacob's trouble will be a hard time for the remnant. The Most High said for the sake of his people, he will shorten the days. The scriptures went on to say, if the Most High did not shorten the days, none would be saved. The book of Isaiah revealed that if the Most High said it, he will do it. The Most High will do all of his pleasures. That is why he tell you the end from the beginning for you to prepare yourself. 
declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executeth my counsel from a far country, yea, I have spoken it, I will also bring it to pass, I have purposed it, I will also do it. Israelites, do not become too focused on going home that you forget to prepare your people, your family, your friends, and yourself for the times when the word of the Most High becomes scarce. When the word of the Most High becomes scarce, that is a direct attack on your spirit. Any injury caused to your spirit can be fatal. Your spirit is the real you. The word of the Most High said, man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of the Most High does man live. And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. You cannot nourish your spirit with earthly food. You cannot nourish your spirit with water. You cannot nourish your spirit with worldly entertainments. You cannot nourish your spirit with anything that has to do with the flesh. The word of the Most High is the only thing that can nourish your spirit. That is why the scripture said in Deuteronomy and the book of Matthew that man does not live by bread alone, but by the word of the Most High does men live. The truth of the Most High's words will sanctify you. Food cannot sanctify you. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. When the Messiah fasted 40 days and was led into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil, Satan said to the Messiah while his flesh was starving from a 40-day fast, If you're the Son of God, transform these stones into bread. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. The Messiah's response was, Man does not live by bread alone, but by the word of the Most High. The Messiah knew how important it was to nourish his spirit with the word. Through the word, he can fight off any devil. Eating the food Satan tempted him to create with the stones was not going to deliver him from Satan's persecutions. Matter of fact, the earthly food was going to clog his spirit. The 40-day fast nourished his spirit. Israelites and indigenous black people, the Messiah wanted you to know how important the word of the Most High is. That is why the Messiah quoted the word in Deuteronomy to get the devil to flee from him. Satan tempted him multiple times before he fled. Although the flesh was malnourished, the spirit was alive and powerful because the spirit was fed in the 40-day fast. Israelites, now than ever, all who serve the true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob must draw near to the Most High while he may be found. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. And purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. The times of sorrows is a time of hardship, and many are suffering while the earth is groaning. Israelites and indigenous black people, I encourage you to immerse yourself in the word. Allow the Holy Spirit to reveal truth. Only the Spirit of the Most High can reveal truth and tell you the things to come. Albeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Israelites, study the word for yourself while the Most High is making knowledge available to all with an ear to hear. We are living at a time where many people are running to the word and their knowledge is increasing. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. The book of Daniel said, In the last days, your knowledge shall increase. We are at the times of sorrows, which is the beginning of the end times. There is a time that is coming when you have to know the word for yourself. You're not going to be able to phone a friend. 
You're not going to have the option to email your favorite YouTube teacher, nor have access to the messages that are available to you during the times of plenty, the awakening. The Most High said he will send a famine into the world. The famine he will be sending is not your normal famine of food. The famine will be his words. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. A lot of people are preparing for the times when they are not able to feed their flesh. Many other teachers and I have warned you to prepare. Some have channels dedicated to show you how to store food for you and your family when there is a famine of food. Just as we are witnessing the rise of the cost of food through inflation, some people cannot afford to feed their family. There are other Israelites and strangers that are storing food for when the men of sin say you cannot buy or sell. But what are you going to do when the word of the Most High becomes scarce? How are you preparing for the famine of the word of the Most High? Let me remind you once again, man does not live by bread only. Men live by the word of the Most High. I hope every Israelite take heed to the warning the Most High gave his people when it said in the book of John that the hour has come and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. A lot of people overlook the spirit part of their journey. Many Israelites are on this journey solo, meaning you don't know a lot of people who believe this truth. Those who are on the broad road to destruction are focused on saving the flesh. The flesh will return to the ground from where it was taken. The spirit will return to the father. Your spirit is eternal. Your flesh, the body is temporary. If your spirit belongs to the Satans in the afterlife, you will be on the side of Sheol that is reserved for the wicked. After judgment day, your spirit will be cast into the lake of fire with the Satans. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Israelites, just as you are preparing your flesh for the times of sorrows and Jacob's trouble, many of you reserve food, water, and shelter. Some are preserving money to buy food to feed their flesh, as well as saving money for an emergency. I hope you are preparing your spirit for when the word of the Most High becomes scarce. If you don't know the word and how to use the word, how are you going to cast out devils that come to tempt you? Spiritual warfare is a must on the battlefield. The word of the Most High said, the devils will flee when you submit to the Most High and resist the devils. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. If you cannot resist the unclean spirits that tempts you day and night, the strongholds the devils place on your life will cause you to drift from the Most High. Drifting from the Most High will cause you to become a prey to the workers of iniquity in the beast system. With the people drifting from the Most High, it will contribute to the prophesied falling away in Jacob's trouble. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The Satans whom you learn how they deceive the whole world in the awakening will become your gods when you don't know the word. So many of our people today are being strengthened with the word that is being taught in the awakening. What will you do when the Satans decide to pull the plug from social media and you can no longer fellowship online with your favorite YouTuber that teach the truth of the Most High's words? Are you going to return to the house of bondage, the church? Israelites, my questions are legitimate. You should be thinking about these questions in the last days. To the indigenous black people who wants to return to the house of bondage, the church, the Most High said to come out of her. Do not be partakers with her. 
And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. There is already a famine of the Most High's words in religion. That is why the church is known as the house of bondage. The Most High doesn't dwell in the temples of sin. The heathen Gentiles worship and make sacrifice to other gods in their temples. Remember, the world do not know the Most High. Therefore, the beast system's religion culture do not serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They serve devils in religion. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. The Most High do not want you to fellowship with devils. If religion in all of its form was truly serving the Most High, the dark powers that run this world would be powerless against the church. The Most High said, I will build my church and the gates of hell would not prevail against it. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter and upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gates of hell is prevailing against the church in the beast culture. The principalities and powers, as well as the spiritual wickedness in high places, are controlling religion and everything that has to do with religion. The Satans would not be the God of this world if the Most High was in the churches. The word of the Most High is so scarce in religion that the chosen people in the church don't know they are the chosen people. They are reading the scriptures that talk about their history and people, yet their eyes are closed. They cannot see. Their ears cannot hear. Declare this in the house of Jacob and publish it in Judah, saying, Hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. When it comes to the house of bondage, the church, the blind is leading the blind. They both will fall into the ditch. Israelites and indigenous black people do as the scriptures say and come out of her. Our ancestors who live in the generation of the slave trade, many of them lost their way through the abuse they endured in slavery. Because our ancestors decided to accept the heathen's God through the slave religion called Christianity, they departed from the God of their fathers. The scripture said the Israelites would serve other gods in the land of their captivity. Our ancestors forgot the Most High through the suffering and abuse from the hands of the other species of mankind. A time is coming that will be worse than our ancestors in the slave trade experience. Our generation is experiencing the beginning of it. What do you believe is going to happen during the times of Jacob's trouble when there is a famine of the Most High's words? And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. The word of the Most High said, During the times of sorrows, the good news will be taught in all the kingdoms of this world as a testimony to the nations. After the word is taught, then the end will come. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. There is a house of bondage, a church in every corner in the USA. The mother harlot, the Roman Catholic Church, has an altar in the form of a church in every nation of this world. Even the most remote places of this world has a church. The people who are living in the remote places are familiar with the image of the beast. Before our generation, Christianity was spread throughout the world with violence. The heathens rob and pillage every land in this world and place an evil altar in the form of a church to control the land. Yet they tell the people the church with the graven image of the beast is their God. This was done long before our generation, yet the end did not come from the heathens spreading the good news in religion. I don't know how the indigenous black people can stay in the pagan churches. The word does not support their accomplishments. The end did not come despite the heathens spreading their abomination across the world. The word they spread is not the word of the most high. The word of the most high is not in religion. Now do you see the importance of working out your own salvation with fear and trembling? 
Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more, in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. There are a lot of teachers, pastors, and prophets who want the sheep to depend on them for the word of the Most High. When the sheep become dependent on their teachers, they are unable to stand on their own two feet. A lot of indigenous black people build a relationship with the most high through other people. Some refuse to seek the most high for themselves. When the famine of the most high's words come, you won't have a choice but to stand on your own. A lot of you are preparing for the worst and you should. You are preparing to have food to eat. You cannot survive without food. However, a lot of you are neglecting your spirit. The famine against the word of the Most High is worse than not having food. The word of the Most High is alive and powerful. The word can do things the earthly food cannot do. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The word of the Most High can cast out devils. The word can heal you and the word can protect you. The word can provide for you. The word can establish covenants with the most high. The word nourish your spirit. The word connect you to the most high. The word is a sword. The word can activate the army of the most high. The word can discern the thoughts and the intent of the heart. The word is so powerful that the most high told you to remind him of his words. Put me in remembrance, let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. Israelites, how are you going to remind the Most High of his words if you don't know his words? When our ancestors left Egypt with all the riches of Mizraim, the food the Most High provided for them is not what they were used to. The Israelites wanted to go back to Mizraim, a place of bondage, just to have soul food. The Most High just did a great miracle in the sight of our people, yet the Israelites were blinded from a lack of food. Many of you will become blind with all the suffering in Jacob's trouble that you will forget how the Most High is preserving you in the mix of hardship. Because the Most High was with his people, he was able to provide for his people by giving them food to eat in the form of manna. And it came to pass that even the quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning the dew lay round about the host. And when the dew that lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness there lay a small round thing, as small as the hoarfrost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna, for they wist not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. If we're honest, when you're experiencing hardship and constant disappointment, many people become upset with the Most High. At that time, the enemy will bombard your mind with all kinds of negative thoughts. You have to remember what the words say about casting down the evil imaginations that rise against the word of the Most High. Because if you don't, you will become a casualty in the B system. I hope Israelites everywhere understand why the road to eternal life is so narrow that only a few will find that road. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. When the word of the Most High becomes scarce, you have to have enough of the word in you to be able to pray prayers that will allow the Most High to intervene. If you don't know the word, how are you going to establish covenants with the Most High? Provision from the Most High is better than money. Provision from the Most High will last forever, while money is temporary. Once you run out of money, what are you going to do? Remember the story about the widow and the oil in the scriptures? Once the Most High provided for her, she never ran out. The provision from the Most High kept coming. And she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but an handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise, and behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me, and my son, that we may eat it, and die. And Eliza said unto her, 
fear not, go and do as thou hast said. But make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after, make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruse of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. Israelites and indigenous black people, despite of a famine of the word of the Most High, the scripture said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. When there's a famine, the abundance that you're used to will become limited or restricted. A famine of the Most High's words does not conclude the word is gone and you can't find it. A famine means the words will be scarce. The word is not going to be available to you like it is now. You would have to have enough of the word in you to know what to do when the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Israelites, you have to study the word for yourself for you to stand on your own two feet. Do not rely on other people to teach you. Despite of the word of the Most High becoming scarce, the kingdom of the Most High is within. If you have the Holy Spirit living in you to tell you the truth, as well as the Holy Spirit is telling you the things to come, that is enough for you to stand against the enemies. Israelites, when there is a famine of the word, don't be like the silly virgins who had a lamp, but did not gather oil for the lamp. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps, and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps, and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. A lot of you have more than enough to feed your flesh. You made enough preparation for the flesh. However, when it comes to your spirit and the word, you don't have a clue on what to do. Make sure you have enough of the Most High's words in you when you are on the battlefield. When the disrespectful devils come to you in the form of a heathen and say to you, Where is your God? When all hell is breaking loose at the end times, do you have enough of the word in you to respond? If yes, what would you say? Wherefore should the heathen say, Where is now their God? The Most High is where he has always been, sitting on his throne, ruling. No heathen can remove him. The Most High is my shepherd. I will not fear. What can men do to me? But our God is in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. Those are very good responses, but knowing me, I would tell the devil to go jump in the lake of fire with their fathers and die. Then proceed to ask the Most High to judge the devil before his time. But that's just me. What about you? And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? Are you going to be like King David and choose violence when the Nephilim called Goliath disrespected the armies of the Most High? David said, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He defeated the Nehandathal and cut off his head. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine, and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee, and take thine head from thee. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air, and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, 
and he will give you into our hands. Therefore David ran, and stood upon the Philistine, and took his sword, and drew it out of the sheath thereof, and slew him, and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. You have to speak the word, Israelites. Your words have no power, but the Most High's words has all the power. I don't know about you, Israelites. I'm not waiting for the day the Most High decide to make a new covenant with the house of Israel and Judah to know him for myself. I pray and ask the Most High to establish his covenant now. I ask him to write his laws into my inward parts and write his laws in my heart. That way I will know the Most High for myself and I will be able to stand firm. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. Although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord. But they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. When the word becomes scarce, I hope you will look within, for the kingdom of the Most High is within. The Most High did say his words will never pass away. Israelites, do not let the word of the Most High pass away in your heart because of hardship. Learn to trust the inner voice of the Most High operating in you. That is how you will know the word when the Most High sent a famine of his words to the world. Israelites, seek the Most High while he can be found. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saveth them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them, and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. And let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving, and declare his works with rejoicing. 